back to Thaden Boys. What's happening? I haven't got an enormous amount of time. It's about 1 p.m. slightly after. Stopped to buy a pasty back there at the shops and the bakery. So I've got a kind of urge to get out to sort of towards um, the other side of you know, Waltham Abbey. Love Waltham Abbey, a bit of Waltham Abbey. Maybe a little bit of Enfield if I can get it in in the light. So this walk should have a bit of everything really, hopefully. A bit of forest, which is always good for soul. I'm also really curious about this area here, just to the right of my uh, thumb, that part of the forest. I've walked the other side of my thumb. <laughs> There's a little patch there that I don't really know. So I'd quite like to fill it in. And then moving towards the edge there, you can see the edge of Waltham Abbey sort of parish there near Upshire. But you know, it's a movable feast, these things. This is another really beautiful little patch of the forest between uh, Thaden Boys here up to Amesbury Banks, the green ride that leads out there. When I was a kid, um, I spent a lot of time in Burnham Beaches, Buckinghamshire, just the other side of Slough, really. This part of the forest here really reminds me of that. It's good because it's got close to the road here, obviously beach trees, and you get these little car parks, little places where cars can pull up. Got a real sudden kind of memory of childhood going out to Burnham Beaches. So I'm going to see if I can bypass uh, Amesbury Banks. Now you might think that's a bit of an odd thing to do because it's such an amazing location, but I've been there quite a few times. But I've never been to the area between Amesbury Banks and the other bit of the forest, sort of to the north of Amesbury Banks, because that becomes such a magnetic attraction. dead ferns and bracken illuminated by the winter light really quite beautiful in this state At some point I've got to cross the M25, if I'm going the right way. <laughs> if I don't reach the M25, it means I've gone badly wrong. Wow. What a wonderful open plain. I'd love to come back and see this in the summer. As I say, I usually walk through the forest, and out towards Amesbury Banks and Epping, and really kind of venture up to this side. Anyone remember the uh, classic 80s TV show, Max Headroom? <laughs> that is almost the symbol of the 80s, isn't it? Max Headroom, that disembodied digital head. Oh, this is the way ahead. Interesting, concrete track running through the forest. In the general direction of where I was thinking of going. So I am here now, basically. So I can either carry straight on, cross the M25 here, and then either carry on up to Copt Hall, although I've walked here, but not here. Or I could walk along the M25 and then go directly to Waltham Abbey here. I mean, it's all good really, isn't it? Now oh, this is interesting here. It says that this important bog is ponded back by the road you are standing on which radiocarbon dating of a borehole down to the bottom of the bog dates to 2000 BC. So it must originally have been a raised segment of Neolithic trackway. See, that's what I love about coming out here. Things like this. You're literally walking through the past. Something almost processional in the way that the uh, trees arch across this trackway here, this Neolithic trackway. So I'm basically where my thumb is, 
in that green dotted line, the footpath. And there's the motorway. Carving through the top of the forest. I actually want to find a footpath over here and slightly go back on myself, but I don't know, mm, I don't know how I'm going to find it to be honest. So, so uh, sign for the public footpath. And this is the public footpath. It does not look very inviting at all, but I'm going to give it a go. Wow. It comes out onto this wonderful big ploughed field here right on the edge of Epping Forest. I guess I have to walk along the field edge and then turn back uh, north. I'm already, I'm seriously in danger of losing my bearings doing this. I'm traveling on sort of packed tube trains every day, morning and evening this week. So this is very therapeutic to get out here into the open fields and the muddy tracks. So I think this is now, this part here is a little section of the Three Forests Way that comes across out through Epping Forest. Here we go, over the M25. I don't think there is any good option here, look how deep that mud is. And then there's barbed wire blocking you from getting into that field. I think it's just a question of accept the wet muddy feet, I think. He said this walking lark was all funny. What's great about this walk today is I'm filling in a whole other kind of section of the uh, Ordnance Survey map. 174 Epic Forest and Lee Valley. It's, uh, I am determined to try and walk all the parts of that map that I can. Uh, I don't know how long I've been doing it, 12 years. Still loads I haven't done. I mean, you get these little bits in between, you know, which is kind of what I'm doing today. I've walked those fields on the other, oh, look at that old church there, my God. Oh, I'm gonna have to try and get up and have a look at that. Hmm. You see? The world is full of surprises. That's where I'm going, Wood Green Lane quarter of a mile and then that leads me to the edge of Waltham Abbey and then we'll get a change in scenery. So it's what 2 30. We've got about an hour and a half of effective light sunset I think it's just after four o'clock. Hopefully get a bit of a Lee Valley sunset today. This is another one of those kind of uh, reluctant footpaths <laughs> you know they don't really want it here. Very narrow overgrown <laughs> But at least it's here, I suppose. Yeah, and look, <laughs> they've gated the next bit of it. They don't want you to go through here, do they? This is lovely now, the edge of Waltham Abbey. Dogs are barking, wood smoke burning. Look, they've done it again. It's like an obstacle course. You've actually got a limbo under that. It's got barbed wire around it. Unbelievable, look at this. <laughs> it's not a very friendly farmer, that. And it's uh, clearly a public footpath. So quite what they're doing, putting an iron bar across the entrances to this footpath. Anyway, so beautiful out here soon be plunged into uh, the suburban fringe of Waltham Abbey. Got some horses here in this field. I wonder if they'll come over to me for some food and I haven't got a thing to give them. Always carry a carrot in your pocket just in case, eh? And the light shone down on the Lee Valley. Look at that. So I've heard described as fingers of God when the light breaks through the clouds like that. Bottom Roberta Smith used that phrase. The Longfields Avenue allotment site. It's always good to see some well-kept allotments. And these are very well-kept allotments. So this bit's kind of unexpected actually. It's like still a lovely little green path that leads through this kind of suburban housing estate on the edge of Waltham Abbey. 
blending the countryside in with the, uh, the edge of the town. So this is the Cobbins Brook. That mythology of Boudicca attached to it. Crossed over this recently on a walk and also about the same time last year. So when you walk through this area, sort of just to the north of Epping Forest, you encounter this charming little brook so loaded with myth and history. Look at the fantastic pattern it makes carving its way around the edge of this field here. A little stream shaping the landscape. A little kind of parade of shops here in this housing estate. Man Brothers supermarket, you've got a fish bar here, news agents. What more can you want? Look at the uh, last hour of sun pitching up on that hill there. That's just to the east of Galley Hill. I went up there about a year ago actually to catch the sunset. We've got a beautiful sunset up there. Yeah, last November. Perfect time to be arriving at one of the most kind of sacred and important spots in the whole of England, Waltham Abbey. Such a wonderful, magical, powerful place. The story of how the, uh, the Abbey came to be built here in the first place, nearly a thousand years ago now, in the reign of King Harold, and then its links to King Harold, the way that he stopped here on his way to the Battle of Hastings, and that journey recreated by Ian Sinclair, Andrew Cotting, and uh, Claudia Barton, and a band of others in their wonderful film, Edith Walks, and I shot some footage here for that film. And of course, it's said to be the final resting place of King Harold, or at least part of King Harold. The monks at the Abbey implored uh, Harold not to march on to Hastings, but to rest for a while, because he was knackered after fighting the Norwegians up at Stamford Bridge in Yorkshire, or in the north somewhere. Just imagine if he had. Do you say Harold had rested here and not rushed down to fight William at Normandy? I probably wouldn't be speaking quite like this. <laughs> Neither would any of us. It's an interesting thought, isn't it? So you would assume that the final resting place of the last Saxon king of England would be one of those kind of great stone kind of uh, tombs over there. But actually, it's far more modest than that. And I quite like that about this site. I know I've said that before in previous videos, but here it is. See if you can spot it. Wow. So, they've got a new stone here now. This wasn't here when I first came here. I don't think. How much of uh, King Harold, if anything, is here? I think his body had kind of been chopped to pieces. It took him a while to get the body back as well, so it would have been in a fairly bad state. Of course, Waltham Abbey was also a place of pilgrimage in the Middle Ages. Apparently that was something that came from uh, King Harold's uh, mistress, Edith Swanneck. And the bigger site was at Walsingham, actually, which is further, I think it's near Lincolnshire, isn't it? If you haven't seen Edith Walks by Andrew Cotting, featuring Ian Sinclair, Jem Finer, Claudia Barton, and some other people. <laughs> I highly recommend it. I think it's available on DVD now, and it's a really beautiful recreation of that journey that Edith took to recover Harold's body and bring it back here. Great, so here's the Meridian Line running through Waltham Abbey. It didn't feel like the walk was ended really there in uh, Waltham Abbey, so I'm just going to walk up the Lee Navigation 
mile and a half to Chesson, I think. Finish it off nicely. It's 4.15, sunset now, technically. It'll get dark probably in about 10 minutes time, but it's had a very strong urge to kind of walk along the navigation, in, even in the dark, actually, which I've done a few times. It's completely gone now. Oh, very peaceful out here. Well, very peaceful, but not completely uh, deserted. The odd cyclist, the odd jogger. But um, definitely worth adding this little bit onto the walk. Walking into the dark. Well, bye bye, Lee Navigation for now. Time now to turn for Chessent Station through here. Wonderful evening. Yeah.